Hey there! Back by popular demand, today we're making a full face kitsune mask. In a previous video, we made a kitsune half mask and you can check that out over here. But it is only fair that we make this iconic piece of Japanese culture in its complete form as well. The Japanese fox mask or kitsune mask goes all the way back to the 14th century and is often worn at different festivals. You've also probably seen this mask in many anime and video games, such as Demon Slayer, Genshin Impact, Naruto, and many many more. You can follow along and make one for your cosplay or just to hang it on your wall and enjoy its beauty. Let's get into it! Part 1. Making the base Stuff you will need Open up your cereal box and then measure and cut it into one and a half centimeter strips. We're going to use these strips to frame around the face, so if you find that your cereal box cardboard is a bit stiff, like mine was, it's helpful to bend the strips over your thumbs so that it's easier to make them take round shapes. Test this on your face to make sure it's the right size for you and readjust it if needed. Next up, I'm gonna add a horizontal strip through the middle to go right over the tip of my nose. You should try on the mask again to make sure that this piece is at a comfortable distance from the tip of your nose. And then I'm gonna add a vertical strip down the center. Now, we need to cover all over the face with vertical strips. I'm going to do this one quarter of the face at a time. After that, we're gonna go over the whole mask with horizontal strips. Now, in order for the strips to lay smoothly over your mask, sometimes you may need to cut them into smaller pieces and shapes. So, make sure to do that wherever you feel is necessary. Next up is making the ears. I'm gonna draw this ear shape on a piece of cardboard and I'm actually gonna place the mask over it too so that I can make sure it's gonna look just right for the mask. Once you're happy with the shape, go ahead and cut it out. And in order to make the other ear, you can just flip this over, trace around it, and you will have an exact copy for the other side. Then you can go ahead and attach them to your mask using hot glue.
And lastly, we need to build up the snout. For that, I'm gonna grab a piece of newsprint and crumple it up into a ball. I'm gonna try to compress it as much as I can and then stick it on my mask using hot glue. You can do this a few more times and add more pieces here and there until the shape of the snout looks just right and, of course, symmetrical. I'm gonna go ahead and cover all over this area with masking tape. This gives us a smoother and more defined shape of the snout and it's gonna make it easier for us to apply paper mache over it later. While doing this, I'm again pressing down into the newsprint to try and compress it as much as I can. The shape I get at this point is still not perfect, and now I got a few dents on it too as a result of crushing it in. But remember that you can always add more pieces of paper anywhere you like to make the shape of the snout look just as you want. Now we're all ready to move on to the next step. Part 2. Paper mache. Stuff you will need. To make the paper mache glue, put two parts glue and one part water in your cup and mix them well. The consistency you get should be neither too sticky and nor too watery. Here's a list of substitutes you can use instead of PVA glue. Next, we need to shred our newsprint into smaller strips and pieces. Once you have all that ready, you can start by dipping a piece of newsprint in your glue and then laying it on top of your mask. Use your fingers and press down on each piece to make sure it's laying flat and to get extra glue and air bubbles out from underneath it. And bonus tip! If the paper doesn't lay flat and smoothly over an area, you can tear it a little bit so that it won't wrinkle. It also helps to use smaller bits of paper over the curved and round areas. Continue doing this until you've covered all over the mask back and front. Now, when I got to the ears, I decided to wrap them up with one layer of masking tape before covering them with paper mache. This is because the ears are just one layer of thin cardboard and the moisture from our paper mache glue is gonna make them get wet and wavy. The masking tape will prevent this contact and keep the ears straight.
After you're done covering the whole mask, you have to wait for it to dry completely. If you want, you can also use a hair dryer to help speed that up. After one layer has totally dried, you can start with the next one. Keep going until you've covered all over the mask with at least three layers. Applying these more layers is gonna gradually make our mask smoother and stronger. After three full layers, I decided to put my focus only towards the spots that I wanted to smooth out more than the others. You can apply as many layers as you think is needed until the surface of the mask is all smoothed out. As a final step, you can also use sandpaper over your mask but that's optional. Now let's move on to the other details of the mask, starting with the ears. To build up the frame of the ear, I'm going to roll up a piece of paper and glue it around the outline of the ear. After we're done with that, we need to paper mache over it. But I realized the ears were a bit too hollow and how it would take a while to smooth it all out with paper mache. So that's why I started gluing small folded pieces inside the ear to fill it up a bit, but only halfway. It should be easier now to create a natural looking curve on this part of the ear. I'm gonna start by laying the pieces at an angle in a way that it creates a slope. Do that all the way around the ear and you're gonna get a smooth curved surface that looks like this. Although, since it doesn't have a firm surface underneath it, I suggest going over it with two or three more layers as well. And let's not forget that we should cover the other areas and edges of the ears too. The next detail we're going to work on is the forehead. For raising the forehead, I'm going to fold up some pieces of paper and then glue them on.
And then, of course, I'm gonna smooth it out with paper mache. Now we can move on to cutting out the eyes. I'm gonna put the mask on and feel around the face and use a pencil to mark where I think the eyes should go. Now it's totally possible that these dots are not symmetrical. So I'm gonna draw a line down the center of the mask and then measure to make sure both dots are at an equal distance from it. For the shape of the eyes, whether you want a circle, a slit, or any other shape, I suggest you make a template for it. Here, I'm gonna go with a circle. And I found that a circle with a diameter of one and a half centimeters is just big enough for me to easily see through. Place your template so that the dot is right at the center and then draw the eye. Now we can finally start cutting them out. You need to take your time with this part and do it carefully, as you'll find that it's kind of hard to cut through the mask. But I guess that just means we've made a pretty sturdy mask. And finally, I'm gonna use small, thin strips of paper to paper mache around the eye holes. At this point, we're practically done with this step. But if there's still any uneven parts that are bugging you, you still have the chance to go back and fix them as you please. Once you're totally happy with how it looks, that means we can move on to the last step. Part 3. Painting and Decorating for painting the mask, I'm going to use acrylic paint in the traditional colors of white, black, gold, and red, but you can do it with any set of colors you like. For attaching the mask to your face, we can use macrame cord or elastic band. We'll talk more about that later. First, we need to start by painting all over the mask with the base color. If you do have spray paint, it can make this step much easier. Now let's get to the design. First, I'm gonna draw my pattern on with a pencil. To find ideas for your design, a quick search on Google or Pinterest will give you hundreds of options to choose from. If there's a specific design you have in mind, like a certain character, you can do that, or use other images as inspiration and make your own unique design. To make your work easier, I've made a Pinterest board of the Kitsuna designs I liked and used for inspiration, 
and the link to that is in the description. Another bonus tip. Once you've drawn your design on one side, you can use this trick to perfectly copy it to the other side. I'm going to put a piece of transfer paper over my mask and then use a pencil to trace over the design I've drawn. Then you pick it up, flip it, and put it on the other side of the mask. Make sure you align it to be in the right spot and then trace it once again. When you remove the paper, there will be a faint mark of the design left behind. Next up, we can color in the details. For the smaller and more delicate parts, it helps to use a brush with a smaller tip. And wherever you go over the lines or make mistakes, you can use your base color to cover and correct them. And the last thing we need to do is to find a way to wear this thing on our face. Our best two options are macrame cord and elastic band. Here's a brief comparison between them. With the elastic band, it's really easy to put it on your face and you don't need to adjust it every time you want to put it on. As for the macrame cord, the plan is to make it into two braids that you use to tie the mask behind your head. These braids are really pretty and kind of also act as a decoration too. But the downside is that you have to tie and adjust it every time you want to wear it. In the end, it's really up to you. You can even do both if you want. For this mask, I'm going to do the braids cause I really love how it goes with the aesthetic. Here I'm cutting 6 pieces of macrame cord, each measuring 65 centimeters. And then I started braiding them in a simple 3 strand braid. I kept on going until my braid was about 37 centimeters long and then I tied the end into a knot. If the ends are too long, you can snip them shorter and then we can unravel all the strands to get a nice little tassel. For attaching it to the mask, first I'm gonna use masking tape to put them in place and try it on to make sure they're in the right spot. Then you can use hot glue to fix them in place. Make sure they're stuck in place nice and securely and then cover them up with a bit of paper mache. Lastly, 
We need to paint over this spot with our base color. And we're done! Hope you've enjoyed the video and found it useful. If you make this, make sure to share a picture of it with me on my social media accounts. The link to those will be in the description. Also, comment below what you would like me to make for future videos. Like, subscribe, blah blah blah. And tell me in the comments what you thought of this. Okay, bye!